it all started with one football shirt and now I got over 300. I started collecting in 2015 and I can just not believe how fast the time has passed by. And if you've been collecting for nine years, you got some stories to tell, right? I absolutely didn't plan on making this video, so it's gonna be very spontaneous. I remember in 2014, I got FIFA 14 for my birthday and I just started playing Ultimate Team as much as I could. I remember I was so fascinated by all the different kits you could choose from. And this was also the period when Dortmund caught my eye and they basically became my favorite team. So I remember in January 2015, I bought my first official shirt. It was a Dortmund 4015 home shirt with Marco Royce on the back. I remember when I received it, I was over the moon and I would just wear that shirt during the summer of 2015 as many times as I could. But yeah, what happens if you wear one shirt a lot, it gets dirty and damaged. That's why at the end of 2015, I bought two extra shirts. One was the FC Barcelona 1516 home shirt with Messi on the back. And the second shirt was the Arsenal 1516 away shirt with Alexis on the back. I remember I would just wear these shirts during PE classes in high school. But yeah, back in high school, I didn't really have any money. So I couldn't really buy any more shirts, which is very sad for me. I remember Adidas had a crazy template that season. So teams like Real Madrid and Bayern Munich I got some very clean kits. I would say that growing your collection should not be your main focus. Your main focus should be collecting shirts that are special to you. That's why the quantity of shirts I have is not as important to me. But as my collection started to grow, I definitely hit some milestones. And I still remember the first time I got one of my shirts signed. It was back in the winter of 2018. I went to the Ajax training ground in Amsterdam and I had this neon green Ajax shirt and I got it signed by David Neres and Casper Dolberg. But when it comes to getting a shirt signed by a super famous player, meeting Mo Salah and getting my Liverpool shirt sign was definitely one of the craziest moments ever. Mo, one second. One second. I met the whole Liverpool team in October of 2022 when they were having a training session in Amsterdam just before the Champions League game versus Ajax. I got really lucky that day and I'll never forget it. And when it comes to the Dutch legends, because some of you may not know, but I'm from the Netherlands, I think meeting Arjen Robben was definitely a milestone. I met him in February 2022 and he signed two shirts for me, one by Munich and one Netherlands national team shirt. Another milestone would be getting my first match for shirt ever. This happened in January 2021 and I got an FC20 shirt. It's my hometown team worn by Danilo Pereira. He plays at Glasgow Rangers right now. Obviously, I still got it in my collection because it was a personal gift from him to me. It's even got a beautiful signature in the number nine. And yeah, the shirt on itself is beautiful as well. And when it comes to the quantity of shirts I have right now, I can just tell you that the longer you're collecting, the easier it will be to find shirts. So I think on average, I add between five and 10 new shirts to my collection every month. If you've got 300 shirts to choose from, it's kind of hard to pick a few special shirts, but I just had to pick three shirts that are really special to me. And all three have got a memorable story behind them. The first one is the France 2006 away shirt. The World Cup of 2006 was the first World Cup I ever watched. And this was also the period I started playing football myself and I started watching football games. In 2006, I was eight years old and I can still remember that World Cup final as if it was yesterday. I'll never get rid of the image of Zidane scoring that Panenka penalty. I remember I was just really impressed by the intensity of that World Cup final, also because of the headbutt and the penalty shootout at the end. It was just a very nice introduction to football for me. And now you're probably wondering why I didn't get an Italy shirt. Well, it was because I was supporting France and also because I think that the design of the shirt, like this Adidas Team Guys template, is so clean. The second shirt that's really special for me is this Netherlands 2014 away shirt. As you may know, the Netherlands made it to the World Cup final in 2010, which they unfortunately lost versus Spain. Being a football fan from the Netherlands, that was one of the most painful days ever. But four years later, in 2014, we played versus Spain again, and the revenge we got was so sweet. This Netherlands 2014 away shirt reminds me of that game versus Spain, which ended in 5-1 for the Netherlands. I think that was the best Netherlands game I've ever seen in my life. I mean, Van Persie scored that crazy flying header goal and Robin out sprinted Ramos and scored an amazing solo goal. So on the back of this shirt, I got Robin number 11, even signed by him with a silver marker. The story behind this shirt and the clean design of different shades of blue make this shirt definitely one of my most special ones. And shirt number three that's really special is 
This Argentina 2018 home shirt. Well, why is this one so special? I'm gonna explain you. Ace Roma traveled to the Netherlands for a Europa League game back in April 2023. They faced Feyenoord, so the whole squad was staying in Rotterdam. This was the first time I was gonna try to find the player's hotel in order to get my shirt signed. And in this case, I wanted to get the Bala signature, as you can guess, probably. So I had to travel two and a half hours to Rotterdam only with the shirt, by the way. This was the only shirt I took with me. And when we found the hotel, we probably had to wait for two hours or something. Just a few minutes before the players came out of the hotel in order to go to the stadium, the security told me that I was not allowed to show the shirt and that it basically wasn't possible to get any signatures that day. But yeah, by now you probably know that I don't really give up or something. And when I saw Dybala walk out of the hotel, I just showed him this shirt and he signed it quickly and the security got kind of mad at me, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, all of those struggles for this signature is definitely worth it in my opinion because I was over the moon when I got this sign. I think most of the difficulties and struggles I faced were back in the days when I still was learning about collecting football shirts. It was mostly about the fact that I didn't really know where to look for good football shirts. Also, when I was younger, I didn't really have any money or something to spend on shirts. And I also feel like the options of finding good secondhand shirts back in the days were way more limited than they are nowadays. But yeah, I always say struggles make the learning process a bit more spicy. I think the biggest struggle I'm facing nowadays when it comes to my football shirt collection is the fact that I don't have much space at this moment. But yeah, I'm sure in my next apartment, my football shirt collection will just explode. When it comes to tips and advice, I definitely want to tell you that it's worth buying original shirts only. I know nowadays, they got very good copies, but in the end, original shirts just got a nicer touch. Another tip of mine would be to get a name and number on every shirt you collect. Because in my opinion, and this is really personal, a football shirt without a name and number, so let's say a player's name, is not really a football shirt. I mean, it's a shirt you can wear casually, for example. And this can look very good in my opinion, but I don't really wear football shirts in my day-to-day -day life. Also, if you get name and numbers on your football shirts, it's way nicer when you get them signed, for example. Because the player who's signing your shirt will realize, wow, you already bought a football shirt with my name on the back. That's special, let me sign it. And the third tip I have is to buy second-hand shirts in good condition. Because in this day and age, there are so many applications that allow people to sell their second-hand clothing online. And this is the perfect place to find any type of football shirts you want. I would say that if you got 20 football shirts, it's not really gonna change anything in your life. But if you get past the 50 mark, people will notice that your collection is growing and that it's kind of getting out of hand. You know, uh, personally, whenever I meet new people and they ask me what my hobbies are, I always mention that one of them is collecting football shirts and they always get super curious. They're like, oh, how come? Uh, that's really original. I didn't know that and blah, blah, blah. And they start asking me questions and stuff like that. But I would say that my football shirt collection really started impacting my life when I started meeting very famous football players. So the first few times you meet very famous players, it's like a shock because if you're used to seeing that player play champions league games on the television the realization you get when you're standing next to him is kind of weird actually but yeah i've been doing this for quite some years now and unfortunately i'm kind of used to it now i would say that's the only downside of meeting famous players you get used to it and the second reason why my football shirt collection impacted my daily life is because I started a social media because of my football shirts. I think I created an Instagram account for my shirts in 2018. And in the beginning, I didn't really care. I would just post one shirt per week or something. But at some point during the pandemic in 2020, I started posting more often. And at the end of 2020, I also started posting on TikTok. A few months later, Instagram introduced Reels. And I just started posting football shirt content onto TikTok and Instagram. And at some point, the videos just started going viral like crazy. And I remember I was starstruck because I didn't really understand why people would look at football shirts, but I really found it cool. Like, don't get me wrong. But I was like, okay, I'm sharing my passion with people. I'm showing my passion to, you know, strangers and they clearly like it. So that's also what got me into content creation because before I really wasn't a social media guy. I also got to meet some very cool people just because of social media and my football shirt collection. So I think having a hobby you're really passionate about is gonna change your life for the better anyway. And if you collect shirts, you'll also realize that your collection will never come to an end. There will always be 
the next release of a very cool shirt or the next new young player you would love to meet in order to get your shirt signed. There are lots of goals to accomplish, but those accomplishments are only temporary because you'll always want more and more and more. And to all the people who say that this is an addiction, yes, you're completely right. I'm not going to deny that. Long story short, starting a football shirt collection has been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And I don't think I'll ever quit. If you're still watching, I hope you get into football shirt collecting as well, if you haven't already. At this moment, I'm working on various projects featuring different football legends. And I can tell you everything that has to do with football shirts just takes a lot of time. But hey, it will always be worth it. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you very soon.